this is a memory in my mind because to this day I know that there were a million and a half Jewish children that died. I made it. I owe it to share it to the rest of the world on their behalf. The Von Sand Conference took place in a suburb of Berlin on January 20th, 1942, when Shalomik Resnick, Sammy, was just seven years old. Reinhard Heydrich, chief of the Reich Main Security Office, had done the math. The 11 million Jews of Europe should fall away, he said, and Europe would be combed from west to east to ensure that all Jews would be sent to the extermination camps in occupied Poland. This meant not only the Jews living in countries which had already been conquered by the Nazis, but also Jews living in neutral and unconquered countries. This was the final Jewish solution. Sami was one of a total of 11 million European Jews the Nazis intended would simply fall away. From the ages of seven to nine and a half, Sami was a prisoner in two camps, Deblin and Czestochowa. During this period, the Nazi killing machine continued to perfect their extermination policies and capabilities. During 1943, the Nazis extermination camp had been broadened to include a large part of Southern Europe. Jews from Greece and Macedonia were sent to the camps of Poland to be eliminated. In 1944, Germany occupied its own ally, Hungary, and the expert for Jewish questions, Adolf Eichmann, directed the first deportations from Hungary to the death camps of Auschwitz. Then 1945 brought the death marches. Because the Russian army was closing in, the Nazis embarked on a futile attempt to conceal evidence of their sadism and genocide. They forced huge numbers of prisoners to move from the Polish concentration camps to the interior of the German Reich, shooting thousands before and during these death marches and evacuation transports. The Allied troops, while liberating countries from Nazi occupation, encountered emaciated survivors of concentration camps and the forced marches. The Russians were the first to reach the major camp in Poland, Majdanek, near Lublin. Then they reached camps such as Belzac, Sobibor, Treblanka, Auschwitz, Stutthof, Sachsenhausen, and Ravensbrück. And in December 1944, as the Russian army approached Czestochowa, the Nazis began to evacuate the Jewish prisoners of the camp. The last of the transports from Czestochowa was on January 15th and January 16th of 1945. The male prisoners were sent to Buchenwald and the female prisoners to Ravensbrück. But the Nazis ran out of time to evacuate the rest of the prisoners, including Sammy and his sisters. By the time the Russians reached Czestochowa on January 17, 1945, the last of the Nazis had fled. Sammy and his sisters were free. The biggest war in history had lasted for almost six years. 50 million people had been killed, 15 million soldiers, millions of Russians, Polish, and other civilians, and six million Jews had died. Sammy, Rosa, and Sarah had survived. Tell me about liberation, Sam. What happened and how did you feel? I was at a line to be taken away with other Jews. What the Nazis did when the war came to an end, they would take Jews for long uh, walks, marches, and most of them would die because it was so cold and that was the whole idea. And if not for a walk, they would put you in a cattle car and take you to one of the other uh, crematorium type of deals. This, this was their plan. They wanted to get rid of the Jews. I was in the line to be taken away. And suddenly, while the shooting was going on and the fires all around in the city of Częstochowa, the Nazis started to leave. It was great. They started to run away. And, and, and that was the last I saw of the Nazis. It was a great feeling. One Jewish fellow 
I guess they were all Jewish there, went into the Nazi kitchen. He came out with a big ball, looked like a little football, the, the, now that I look at it now, of butter. Mm. And he gave it to me. Oh, I ate the whole thing. Did I ever get sick? And uh, he, liberation continued. We were so thrilled. No more Nazis. And then we waited till about five in the morning. We were going to leave. A group got together and opened up the gate in the concentration camp and started to walk. I still remember it was still dark and it was sort of misty. And we looked on the ground and there were some dead people there. There were German soldiers. And there was to the right a Russian dead soldier. My sister Sarah held on to my hand and when she saw this German soldier, she went, dragged me over, she kicked him and we kept going. Uh, and as we kept going, we heard voices coming our way. And it was the Russians. First there was one Russian, then two, and they kept saying, shh, quiet. And they started to talk with another Jew in the background, and I could hear, should we go back? What's happening? We didn't, we didn't know what was happening. And finally, the, the, the Russians said, go on, go on behind the lines. So first there was one, and then three, and it kept going, got deeper and deeper, until we got behind the lines. And uh, we started seeing trucks, tanks, and I remember the tanks, it was cold right on top of the tanks, were Russian soldiers, and they had these guns holding in, and, and, and it was cold. And we, we walked away from the camp as far as we could. That was January 17th, 1945, one of the coldest winters in Poland. And you know what? I didn't have any shoes. Oh, my. The shoes that I had were rags tied around my feet with string. Those were my shoes and my not good clothing. <laughs> we didn't have clothing. It was torn, raggedy things. And that's what we walked with. And we walked in the direction of our hometown of Demblin. And did you get there? After a long while and seeing uh, broken down tanks and more bodies from fighting, I remember I even climbed up a tank, pretended mm. I was shooting. <laughs> it was broken, and I was still boy. a kid. I was nine and a half at that point. Mm. I guess I was a little boy still. And what, what did you think you'd find in Devon? What were you hoping to find? Uh, we went back to Demblin for one reason. We wanted to see if we had other relatives mm -hmm. that survived. Mm -hmm. That was a good made meeting place. Mm -hmm. After hitchhiking and getting rides by trucks and all of that, we did end up in Demblin. We found no survivors. And the inhabitants of Demblin? Yes. What kind of reception did you get? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that question because I really like to avoid it. The receptions we got were unhuman. Uh, the reception was pretty much, uh, boy, they didn't get you? They should have gotten you. I thought you were all dead. The reception we got was, we don't want you. They were afraid that we'd have to give up their property and anything mm. they had that was Jewish. Mm. Mm. Sometimes people were killed, so we had to leave the town pretty fast. Is that when you were taken to Austria? My sister and Walter had to make a decision what's next. They decided that they would go on to Vienna, Austria and see if Walter had any uh, surviving relatives. Mm -hmm. But what do we do with these two little kids? Yeah. In Lublin, there was, my sister found out there was an orphanage for kids like us, orphans who had lost their uh, 
parents, and she put us in this orphanage, and she promised she would come back to pick us up once she got settled in Vienna. And several months later, she came back to take us back to Vienna.